Hi everyone, welcome back to the CH Wine Tasting Room. This is Chris LaFleur, your super sommelier, and I'm here with my friend Joe Robert. We're gonna be tasting some pretty wild stuff today. Uh, something to know about Joe, he's the author of Wine Taster's Guide, as well as he, someone that can be found at onewinedude.com, where you can read all the things that are going on in his head about wine. Uh, Joe, do you got a taste of that? What's your most recent article that's super fun? Oh wow, I've been doing a lot of travel in Italy, so uh, okay. you can you can pick up quite a, quite a bit there. There's been some stuff on Etna, uh, Romagna, Sanio coming up, so. Doing a big takedown of Chianti. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, probably not true. Maybe we can leave Chianti where it is. Uh, today we've got something pretty special. We're gonna be tasting the 2023 club selection. This is all just for you club members. Uh, and it is a 2021 Carignan. So uh, that's a pretty unique grape to be coming out of Sonoma County. Uh, this is from Alexander Valley. Um, this particular Carignan is blended from five different sites put together in this bottle. Uh, what, what is so significant about this, Joe? What makes this so different from the traditional offerings? Yeah, I'm, I'm psyched to think about this. Yeah, this is probably the first Carignan I'm gonna have ever tasted from Alexander Valley. Mm -hmm. it's just not a grape you see widely planted in, in that area. And really, you don't see it widely planted much outside of uh, France mm -hmm. Rhone, and uh, some parts of Spain. Um, and typically it's a blending component. Yeah. Uh, I, I find some really awesome single varietal Carignans uh, that are coming out with premium wines from Chile, but the production numbers are super low. So this is this is just exciting for a geeky wine nerd like me yeah. you know, to be diving into. Something I mean, special. Even the band Queen really loved this wine. I mean, and they sing about it like Carignan, Carignan. <laughs> and, uh, that, that may or may not be true, but it is something that is hotly debated in wine circles. Uh, anyway, I, I also am a big fan of Carignan. I especially love it from Priorat when it's blended with a little bit of Garnacha, uh, and it's on these really high elevated terraces in Spain. Uh, it makes for a wine that is very deep with great complexity, and I think that no matter where this is planted, we're gonna see some of that here. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's dig in. Did you like that that version of that song? I did. I like Carry On My Wayward Son maybe a little bit better. Oh yeah. I mean, there, there might be whole albums to be made about Carry On. Or maybe have already been done and it's just a matter of someone, some intrepid writer putting it together. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be working on that as soon as this video is over. Yeah, this is not an official assignment, but you know, we'll see how, what the engagement is like. Uh, pretty dark wine. Yeah. Like the look of this. Very deeply ruby, the core doesn't really change and uh, going out to the rim, it doesn't tint any further than pink. So I think this is still pretty youthful. Yeah, and you can, especially those wines I mentioned coming out of Chile, they age wonderfully. So uh, yeah, with a really sort of premium level carrying on like this, I wouldn't expect to see uh, much development yet, mm -hmm. uh, even after a couple of years in bottle. Yeah, it is very fresh and intense on the nose. I really like that aspect of it. Like it's oh, deep, yeah, deep, deep, deep fruit. Uh, like I think you called out sour cherry. Sour when we cherry, were this yeah, before. yeah. I love that note. I also like like um, red currant and black currant. Like there's a depth of fruit here that I associate with those two flavors. Uh, I also am noticing on this go round, I'm getting like a little bit of spearmint or eucalyptol, something that's a little minty. Yeah. And uh, some dried herbal notes. Yeah. And meaty. That's the other that. that and meaty that too. Wild sort of meatiness. Mm hmm. And it's, it's interesting because to me, this isn't like a rustic wine by any means. This mm -hmm. feels like solidly new world, like solidly fruit driven, but all these other notes here add so much complexity. Yeah, it's it, to that point, polished. Yes. You know, you're, you're sensing that, getting a sense of that like deep juiciness, po modern polish, but the signature pieces of the fruit and spice of Carignan are, are still coming through, mm -hmm. which is pretty, pretty sweet. All right, let's dig in and see what the structure is like. Joe and I talked about this beforehand and we were like, spit bucket? No, thank you. Mm. There's so few no, bottles no. of this available. I think there's only 500 cases made and a bunch of it is allocated just to the club. So like if we're, if we're gonna spit this out, we're never gonna taste it again, possibly. So you gotta enjoy this while we got it. Uh, and I, I'm enjoying it right now. A great finish on this wine. Yeah. Uh, I like the structure. I like that the acidity is here. My mouth is watering, but not aggressively so. And it feels really big in the palate, like luxurious, yeah, Absolutely, It's got that voluptuous roundness, mm -hmm. um, which I think with carrying on, typically you, you do get a nice jolt of acid. So it's nice to have that to balance the whole thing out. Abundantly yeah. fruity. 
-hmm. not so much of the, the greener herbal notes and pepper that yeah. you might see in some cooler areas, but you're still getting a lot of that, those spice notes. They're just maybe a little darker, a little more dry, a little more uh, mm -hmm. developed. And the meat note gorgeous. that you called out too, I get it more on the finish than I do like on the nose. Yeah, uh, it's, really pushing it that little, finish. Yeah, yeah, it feels a little bolder. Uh, so what do, what do we do with a wine like this? I mean, it feels pretty powerful to me. Yeah, I mean, it's delicious right now. Mm -hmm. So you could you could definitely be drinking this soon. However, mm -hmm. you know, Carignan, when it's done this well, is known to have some good aging ability. Oh yeah. So it's me, I, I want a couple bottles because I want to see where this is going over maybe anywhere between two to five years. Yeah. It's gonna, I think in five years, it's gonna be absolutely banging. Yeah, but all the nuance here, it's all pretty like tightly wound together. And I'm curious to see how it unwinds and delivers more, uh, even more flavor, especially on the fruit side. I think there's lots to unpack. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, where do you put this with? Well, I'm gonna ask you that question. You're, you're the psalm. Okay. You, you tell me first. For, for me, <laughs> I'm in a restaurant with this. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, I was thinking strip loin earlier, and I'm still kind of thinking strip loin because I think that fat cap handles the weight of this wine. But it, it kind of struck me, like with this spearmint sticking out, this is a great lamb dish. This is oh, something right to go on. alongside that with a little mint jelly. Uh, yeah. You know, Cabernet Sauvignon, especially from Bordeaux, is traditionally like the thing that goes with lamb. But I think this is a new contender. This is something that can maybe jump in there and take that spot if you got a bottle on hand. Nice. I'm, I'm gonna go on the gamey side, the meat, mm -hmm. that meatiness side. Uh, anything gamey, yeah. I think you're, you're golden. Having said that, anything with bacon, bacon wrapped, mm -hmm. is probably also gonna serve you well with this. So you might even be able to think outside of the sort of traditional redder meats, mm -hmm. you could bacon wrapped scallops, shrimp might also work. You know, you start with that as your app, move over to the, the redder meats, you can drink this all the way through. Oh yeah, this is a, a wine for all seasons or a wine for all courses, if you will. Appetizer through entree. Not sure about dessert, but you know, if you like it enough, why not? Might as well give it a try. Chocolate? Yeah. Maybe. So. Where's this gonna fit in the cellar? I think you need a couple bottles of this. You gotta see how it's gonna change and you gotta keep it on hand to show people like, hey, check out this grape. You ever heard of it? Well, these guys know about it and they liked it. These guys being us, <laughs> to be clear. Uh, yeah, I think that this is one that you wanna lie down for a little bit. Like you said, two to five years, I fully agree. I think this is gonna change dramatically. It's gonna unwind. Some parts of it are gonna come together a little more tightly and make like a single driving flavor coming through for it. Um, how many are you gonna buy? Yeah, I'm, I'm half case. Half a case. <laughs> Here, we'll split a case. You have half, I'll have half. I, li I like that. And then we'll, we'll I'll write comments on your onewinedude.com about how much I like the Carignan <laughs> on totally unrelated articles. Uh, I'm getting trolled. By getting a super trolled. Song. It's cool. It's cool. Super trolled by a super song. Uh, and with that, I think I'll see you at the next class. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.